Today's video is another DIY project. I am in the shop today. Don't mind the absolute chaotic mess that's in here. And I need to build a fishing pole holder for my new house and my garage. Basically, I've got all these fishing poles and they have no place to live. So I am going to try to dedicate a spot on the wall for them. Basically to help clean up the garage a little bit and clean up the poles. I spend a lot of money on fishing poles, line, reels, etc. And I don't want them to just be thrown in the garage and go bad or get hit or tore up or anything. So if I've got a nice dedicated spot for them, they should be protected. So today I'm going to do a little DIY project. I've got it up in my mind right now what I want to do, but I don't know how I'm going to execute it yet. So stick with it, stay tuned, and we're going to get through this together. Um, to start, I'm going to do a nice 2x4 base like you see here. I've got 2x4s. I'm going to be using some paddle bits to drill a hole there for the butt of the rod. And then up top, I've got a little 1x4 here, and that'll be the top of where that pole actually hangs on there and will stay in place. So we're going to get into it. Basically, you don't need a lot of wood. You can make it as complicated as you want. You could use one 2x4 and one 1x4, and that should be enough. But I might go a little bit farther than that. So let's see what happens. And let's start uh, drilling and measuring. The absolute very first thing you want to do is get a size of your poles. This is just a Junko pole. It's one of the biggest ones I have. My more expensive ones are a little bit smaller, actually. But I want to measure so that they don't overlap. A lot of those cheaper ones overlap. So what I've got here is I've got all the way to the edge and then all the way past the handle. And it is just about six inches, it looks like. Maybe a touch over. So what we're going to do is we're going to space these rods out at seven inches. And that way, each side of the pole has about a half inch of gap. And so none of these poles should be hitting or banging up next to each other. And that should be perfect for the reels. Some of my reels that are even larger for some of my like ocean fishing will fit in there maybe a little bit tight, but um, should be just fine seven inches. You could do smaller if you want. Or if you just have rods and you don't have reels, you could even do them on three inches on center, two inches on center, something really, really tight and packed in there. So I think I'm going to try to make this pole holder for 10 poles. Um, you could definitely do more. You could do a lot less. So really what you're going to need is a board that's, you know, six, seven feet long. And that's the nice thing about this project too, is most of this wood is scrap, if not all of it. So to start, I'm going to measure out three and a half inches. And the reason I'm measuring out three and a half inches is because that first rod is going to go right there. That first rod is going to go right there at three and a half. And then after that, we're going to add seven. So it's going to be 10 and a half. Add seven again, seven, 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 and we'll just keep on going until we get to our 10 rod mark. As you can see, we've got our black marks there. And then the last one, you want to go ahead and add three and a half on this end as well. And we're going to cap it off right there. So total, you need a 70 inch board. So really not that big of a board. You can get a two by eight or a, you can get a two by four by eight foot. And that would be plenty for this little side here. Now what we're going to do is draw a perpendicular line all the way across to get it squared up and then we're not going to find the center we're going to find off center and I'll show you how far we're going to do this hole because um, we don't want it right on the edge we want to be as close to the outside as possible so I'll show you what I'm going to do there in just a second let me square them up let me square them up first so now what we're going to do is we're going to mark this two by four, which is three and a half inches wide. We're going to mark it at two and a quarter inches. And the reason we're doing that is because I'm going to be using a paddle bit to make a one and a half inch hole, very similar to a board that I practice on like this right here. And basically that hole with the paddle bit is where the rod butt will sit. So we're going to mark that now and then we'll start using the paddle bit to drill this out. It's really important to have a very nice square. It makes everything much easier. As you can see there, I've got my marks now. So what you're gonna need now is a big paddle bit on the drill. And then you're just gonna to wanna to drill out as far as you think is necessary. I'm probably gonna do between a quarter inch and a half inch, and that should be plenty deep and perfect for the end of the rod to sit in. And part of the reason that I am not centering it, which is typically what you'd probably wanna do, is that I think it's important to keep the rod away from the wall a little bit so that you're not banging up against the wall keeping it off the wall you know as much as you can like this is perfect and it will allow for me to maybe attach a two by four to the back of here like this straight down and then something to screw it into the wall that way 
because this right here is going to be hard for it to butt up against the wall. So I'm going to need either a one by or a two by or something on the back end. And it's just going to keep the rods away from that backboard and the wall. And if you don't want to use scrap lumber for that, you can always get some metal brackets or something similar to that. And that would be just as, just as good. Here's what I'm using today. Just a little one and a half inch paddle bit and that should be perfect. And you want to put it right on the center of that guy and drill down about a half an inch. It's not going to be the cleanest, but if you take it nice and slow, it should kind of clean up the hole a little bit and try to, you know, sand it out afterwards if you can. And there you go. You got all 10 holes. Try to get off some of that sawdust. And then, you know, it's not the prettiest, but you can run some sandpaper in there and clean it all up. Probably will not sand it in the video just for the sake of it's sanding. You don't need to see me sand. It's boring. But uh, what we need to do now is we're going to go ahead and cut off this end here. This piece is junk. It's just a little bit extra. Could have made it for 11 rods, but I'm just 10 is fine. I typically fish with four rods. I've got a few extras, but I usually take four with me. So that should be good. Beautiful. All cleaned up. Just need to get it sanded. But the bottom is basically done now. So it's whatever way you want to attach this to the wall, whether you want to use metal brackets or some other two by fours and you can put them down. Basically, you just need something to screw this into the wall with. You could always run a screw long ways through here, but it might be a little difficult and could potentially split the wood. So now what you need to do is the exact same thing with the top board. And on top, I'm using a one by four just for the simple fact that it is a little thinner. Rod height for the eyes can be in multiple different spots. So basically I want it to be as thin as possible in case I've got some different rod types that have eyes in different locations. It's less likely to be an issue where an eye is gonna end up going into one of these holes. So what we're gonna do is essentially make the exact same thing except we're gonna drill those holes all the way through this time and I'll show you why in just a second. So let's get it marked out. First one at three and a half inches and then seven inches every time after that. And I will save you the boredom and I'm just gonna go ahead and do it right now. We got the board all marked up and we got it marked at two and a quarter inches as well. I'm going to start by cutting off this end so it's a little easier to work with and then we're going to start drilling holes. Beautiful. So I considered going down in drill bit size before I drill these holes out. But if you don't keep the same size height wise, it would be pulling the pole towards the wall if this, the diameter of the bottom one is bigger than the top. So what I'm going to do is keep the exact same size. That way when the pole's in there, it's kind of dangling out towards the front because the pole is only going to be held in there uh, because of the weight from the reel is pulling it towards the front, which is going to, you'll see, you'll see. So now we're going to go ahead and drill all of these holes. And these ones are different than these because these only go halfway. These ones are going all the way through. That way the rod will slide in. Okay, on a scale of one to messy, that is probably the absolute worst bit you could ever use. Uh, it works good, but it is not for making clean cuts, that's for sure. So I'm going to have some sanding to do on the bottom side, that's for sure. But it doesn't really matter, I got the holes done. So now what we're going to do is we need a place for the rod to slide into this hole and then to sit in the bottom part. So what I'm going to do is use my square again. So as you can see, we're right on the edge of that. We're going to draw a line down. And then we'll probably come over about a half inch as well and we're going to use a jigsaw and cut out this section here to cut all of this out. And I'll show you what the template looks like in just a second. So here's what it looks like. We're going to cut all of this black part out with a jigsaw, come straight in, and then that pole will slide in and sit right in this area here. <laughs> Everything is now marked, and so I am going to cut all of this out with a jigsaw. And there you have it. Completely cut out, perfect. 
you know it's going to need some sanding that's for sure now that i see it i kind of wish i would have rounded that corner there on all of them but uh, i think it's going to be just fine we'll start with that now so you can see the base there and then we've got this piece here so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to make uh kind of make it a square and so i'm going to make a 24 inch tall height piece there and that should be just enough to uh you know separate the rod from the bottom and the top and should hold it in place so we got two more pieces and then we should be good to go we got to assemble it and then we'll be done So we're just going to assemble it like so. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. It's kind of tough to do it with the camera on and then I'll show you the final product. And just like that, you got a pole holder. So basically the rod goes, basically the rod goes down here into there, up top, kind of at an angle. You push it in just like so, bring it around and then it leans forward, holds right in there. And the nice thing is, like I said, I mean, you can tell where this handle is. It's pretty far over here. You got a bunch of spinning reels in here. It's going to fill up quickly. So I'm going to go get a couple more rods and kind of test it out. I don't really have any place to hang it in here, but uh, we'll try to at least fill it up a little bit. And there you have a beautiful pole holder. And like I said, look at that perfectly spaced. Plenty of room in there. They're not going to be banging up against each other. And uh, this thing is literally such an easy project you need maybe an eight or a ten foot two by four only if you want to make the sides you need a six or eight foot uh, one by four on top super easy project super super easy a couple screws you can use a little glue if you want and a couple drill bits some saws but i mean easy project and yeah you can go buy it for 20 or 40 bucks or whatever but this was all scrap wood all i needed was a little bit of time knocked it out in about an hour and uh it looks awesome Desperately need sanded though. So as soon as I get off of here, I'm gonna start sanding. But I want to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the DIY video. Uh, go try it out. See what you think. It's a really really cool pole holder. I'm hoping that I like it for a long time. And you know I've got room to grow. I've got four poles on there right now. I've got a bunch of other ones around the shop and around the house. So it's pretty cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, let me know if you guys try this project out, and uh, you know share some pictures on Instagram or something. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace, y'all.